Hello, and welcome back to my channel and another video about how to write college essays because that's the content that a lot of people are here for. So um, I finally feel like I'm qualified to make this video and talk about what topics are cliche in people's college essays because this would be coming up this will be the third year that i am editing people's college essays and at this point i have read more than 500 college admissions essays um and i feel like i'm finally ready to have a legitimate judgment on what is cliche and what is not cliche but i just want to clarify i guess that um for a lot of people, when they're writing their college essays, it's like a very interesting moment where they've never really reflected on like the value of their life so far. Um, and there are some interesting consequences of that, including that people talk about things that they've never talked about before or never uh, explained the importance of to anyone else. Um, so... As a result, um, people will address really sensitive topics and sometimes that just like doesn't come across in the way I think that they intend it to. So if I throughout this video am talking about people who are addressing those sensitive topics, it's not because I don't believe in the uniqueness of that experience but more like I have seen people attempt to include or to talk about these things over and over and over and there is only so much that's possible to do in 650 words or 500 words depending on where you're applying um, there's only so much that you can do and there's definitely space for a lot of the for all of the things that I'm going to mention in essays throughout the whole application, but in the Common App essay specifically, I feel like um, there are just certain topics that many, many, many students address and that won't help you stand out necessarily. Um, and they're also just hard to execute as the essay that is framing you, framing who you are. And that's what the Common App essay is. It's like your main essay that is framing who you are. and. Um, I feel like in that essay, that's where it is the most important for you to cast yourself in a light that shows something that is unique. I also want to make sure that the aspect that you pick, because every person has multiple aspects of their life that are really important to them, that the aspect that you pick is something that is going to represent you in both a positive light in a way that intrigues some admissions officer and also in a way that helps you stand out and not have your narrative look very, very similar to uh, a lot of other narratives that college admissions officers are going to be seeing. So um, with that being said, the first narrative that I think by far is the most cliche Um, so first of all, if you submit an essay to me to be edited um, and you use the word passion, I will 100% comment and say don't use the word passion just because it is such an overused word and it's kind of empty unless you back it up. Every single kid is go can say that they have a passion for biology. It's just it does not no longer communicate anything meaningful. And then the subject as a whole it's just so number one um if you work in higher education at all you know that especially for me coming from a school that is uh, like a predominantly a pre-med school if you are coming from that environment then you know that there is a massive amount of people who are going to come in and want to be science chemistry or biology majors and pre-med basically or like pre-lab science for healthcare um, and you also know that a massive amount of those people are going to fall off and no longer be interested in those things so for me um, reading essays where students are really like impassioned about whatever biology neuroscience uh, research that they want to do for their future um, medical career I read that and I take that with a grain of salt more than I take any other academic interest with a grain of salt because it just 
statistically is likely that that person will actually not end up pursuing the thing that they say that they want to pursue. A passionate pre pre-med um, is someone who they're like a dime a dozen. So I just recommend against people when they are writing this essay, their main essay that is defining who they are, writing that about their um, interest in science, biology, or something related to pre-med, unless it has a very targeted and specific theme that the overarching theme is not like, oh, my passion for pre-med, blah, 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 blah. And I definitely think it's fine to write about an experience that made you interested in science, but keep the, I'm so passionate about science, I want to change the world in the future dialogue, like keep that to a minimum because that's not really telling the admissions officer anything about you because that would be like a quality that you would expect to change. And also it would be like a set of qualities that um, probably 30% or more of the applicant pool has declared for themselves as well in their essay. So it just does not carry that much weight to write about that as a topic. So the next one is, and this one is close, this one is close to my heart because I, when I thought of writing my own Common App essay, there is like nothing else that I could think about to write about other than at least something related to the fact that I am an immigrant and that my family moved here from South Africa and that I grew up different in a sort of clandestine, but still very tangible and very important way. And that I speak Afrikaans at home. Um, and I do think it's, possible to focus on an aspect of being an immigrant um, and have a successful essay in that way. But there is one kind of immigration essay that I would steer people away from and this I see this kind very often. Um, and it is the kind of like suffering immigrant narrative. So I understand that a lot of people, this kind of surprised me. I think one of the most surprising things that I've learned from editing essays is that people really seem to aggressively take the um, path of trying to show that they had um, significant challenges throughout their life and that they've overcome those challenges. And although grit is important, um, I'm just not entirely sure where this comes from because when you only have 650 words and you talk extensively about suffering or challenges that you've been through, it runs a risk of having most of the content of the essay be negative or have sort of like a pessimistic tone. And it just doesn't make the essay seem like, oh, I would pick this candidate because of the identity that they've portrayed here. Um, and especially some people have written essays about overcoming struggles where they just simply talk about having some challenge and there is no sense of the challenge having been overcome. Like there will be like one last sentence that's like, oh, at least I've learned a lot, but like, I don't know what you learned. Um, and when an essay extensively talks about people having financial difficulties or struggling or being like excluded because of their um, status as an immigrant. And then there's just very little resolution at the end. Like from my experience, which I know that I can't generalize to everybody, but from my experience, it was kind of unclear to me how exactly I assimilated or how exactly I became okay having like this dual identity as both American and having a link to um, a pretty different culture and reconciling that. It's something that you will carry with yourself forever. So it's a little hard to see how that was explicitly overcome other than just over time you become more similar to the people around you and the people around you become more acclimated to who you are. It's hard to tangibly demonstrate how that challenge has been overcome um, because it just sort of is a natural thing for a lot of immigrants to just be like adopt both identities. Um, so, and honestly, what I'm talking about specifically um, is 
the essay where people talk about assimilation and having difficulty assimilating. Um, and people, and this is literally my essay, my first essays that I wrote that were going to be my common app essay were literally going to be essays about assimilation. Um, and how I felt different, but it's, it really is hard to show how, um, you yourself overcame that assimilation. And for me, I'd rather feel, um, I'd rather portray my identity as an immigrant as something that is positive and has changed my perspective on things, gave me a different perspective and how that perspective has enhanced my experience and given me like additional abilities. And I think those are the essays in general that have been successful, at least the ones that I've seen. Um, but when an essay is talking about how, oh, they, their parents like spoke a different language and people made fun of them at school for dressing weird. Um, I kid you not, I've probably had more than 50 essays say that they brought fo food to school and people said their food was smelly. Um, just like there are certain tropes that appear over and over and over in immigrant essays and also like their parents caring more about their education. I feel like it's a pretty universal, I know there's like stereotypes about people's parents caring about their education, uh, being immigrants, but I feel like that really is like a universe, like people, a lot of people, their parents have moved to America to give their kids a better life. So their parents are a little bit stricter when it comes to education and they do want them to have the best. So when you read this essay of this person who, oh, their parents like moved to America with them and they had a difficult time, learning English and people said their food was smelly and their parents made them work hard while everyone else was having good American kid fun and like slacking off. It just, it's so common, like it's so common. And I just think it just doesn't help people stand out. And I also think it's a little bit like for me, I was like, oh, since I'm one of the only immigrant people that I know, um, in my experience educationally, like it, there just weren't that many when I was growing up, but in terms of people applying to college, like there's a massive amount of immigrants or first generation kids whose parents were immigrants. There's a massive amount of cultural diversity in people who are applying to college. So it just, uh, if you're thinking like that is something about me that is really unique and special and I can represent it in a way that's different from other people, it's actually, I think, a lot more challenging than you think. And if you are going to talk about your experience with immigration, I would recommend that you take a different perspective than the I had a hard time assimilating kind of perspective. If that makes sense. And these are so controversial. Like I'm kind of nervous about posting this, but it's like, I am not saying this because I'm trying to be judgy. It is just because I legitimately believe that this is advice that's going to help my clients. And I feel like I am in a role where I'm like a coach and I, I'm just trying to tell someone something before it reaches an admissions office and it kind of faces the same reaction. These 650 words of your Common App essay are the 650 words that you're using to say I had, because the Common App essay, it has prompts, but the prompts are really like, they're kind of fake, right? Like they just kind of, you can write about anything for the Common App essay. They just, you know how when you apply to grad school, I don't know why you would know that if you're watching this video, but if you apply to grad school, usually they just tell you to write a personal statement and it's like, what the flip is a personal statement. Well, so Common App just gives you these kind of vague prompts to get you to write a personal statement. Um, so, but really you can, you can write anything that you want about yourself. But that also means that when you write a personal statement, like for graduate school, you're writing something that is representing a very distinct part of who you are. Um, and it is important to think about how you want to be characterized in that way. Uh, and so the third thing that I would say is a bit of a common slash maybe avoid kind of topic. Um, and I guess the most touchy of them is mental illness. And as somebody who has an extensive history 
uh, dealing with mental illness and for whom it was very, very important in my life, especially at the moment that I was writing college essays, I wrote a lot of trial essays that were talking about my experiences with that. But the thing is, so I, it was like very, very, very new. And I think anybody who has had an experience with mental illness that lasts like over several years and you've seen yourself develop and you've seen yourself grow, it's looking back at the way that I thought about things then, it was very just catastrophic and like, I don't understand it and I don't know what's going on. It can be really difficult to talk about them in a way that exemplifies having overcome what those issues are. And also, um, it can just be very hard to talk about in the first place. And like for me, I remember when I was writing about these things, it was like I had not yet been diagnosed with these things. A lot of times when I do read essays that do talk about mental illness, I get the sense that the people who wrote them also have not yet been diagnosed. But more interestingly, I get the sense that they have not ever spoken to anybody about these feelings. And I think that's actually something that's very, very common is for people to talk in their essays about things that they have never told anyone about. And like sometimes very traumatic and personal experiences and it feels like this is the first time they've ever told anyone. I completely understand why you would want to do that but also just if you think about it externally and this is how I've grown to think about it now that I've been editing essays, it's kind of weird to like in a place where you're pitching yourself um, kind of that's what you're doing. You're pitching yourself to tell the university that you're worth admitting. It's kind of strange to then be for the first time disclosing thoughts that are very difficult to deal with and difficult to talk about and things that you haven't discussed with anyone before. It's just a kind of an odd place to do that. So I think sometimes how it comes across when people talk extensively about mental illness, first of all, it runs into the problem that I was talking about earlier where the essay as a whole just has a very negative tone um, that's kind of hard to get through. Um, and I don't wanna, like I don't wanna say sound rude when I say that, but it's just that if you read an essay that is entirely about somebody and their suffering, it's hard to walk away from that and then see what the positive of it is. Um, and second of all, I think sometimes it robs people of an opportunity to talk about something that is perhaps more special to them about themselves. And I think that's really what I'm trying to get at here. I think that a lot of people have had very challenging experiences when it comes to mental illness. But for me, even though that was one of the things that was very much at the top of my mind when I was applying to college essays and I kind of had this sense of like oh I want them to know how much I've suffered but ultimately like I don't want to be admitted because someone feels bad for me or thinks that I've like overcome a lot um, just because well a lot of people a lot of people go through mental illness and I think people kind of underplay how many people it is so I don't want to you know imply that like um, special for having this experience um, and then also there are things that I feel like define me in a way that I'm proud of and I don't think having a mental illness or even working to control it is necessarily something that I'm proud of. It is just something that I do and I definitely now it is not something that I would want to share with someone who I'm trying to represent myself for the qualities that I like about myself, if that makes sense, because I don't like that I have mental illness. What's really special to me about having the opportunity to edit people's college essays is I feel like there isn't such a high stakes structured moment that they are really like looking back at their life and like thinking about what these last 18 or 17 or more than that years have meant to them. Um, and I think when you're taking this moment of reflection and you're looking back at how do you want to represent yourself in 650 words, what do you want to say about who you've been as a person? Like this is a very intense moment of reflection. And I think for a lot of people, it shapes somewhat how they see 
what they've done so far in their life. And I think it just benefits people most um, in shaping this profile that they're really creating to present apologies of who they are, what they've done so far, and what they're proud of if they focus on the uniqueness of those experiences and also focus on um, making sure that those experiences ultimately direct towards a positive direction. Um, and if you are going to write about overcoming challenges, obviously there's some great essay topics that you can write about that, but just make sure that your essay is more about the overcoming part and has details about how you overcame it and what you learned that are specific um, and that you can take, as you reflect about it, that you can take forward in your life um, and that show that you have learned something significant from that experience, not just that that experience existed. Um, and otherwise, just don't write an essay about overcoming a problem. I think that that's a pretty safe bet. And if I had to make a blanket recommendation, that that's the recommendation that I would make is don't write the overcoming a problem essay. Cause I think that one's cliche as a whole. I hope that I have not made anyone feel bad about anything that they've written now or in the past. And I know that everyone is special and they have a story to tell. And if that story is, doesn't have huge flashy details, that's perfectly fine, um, but it can still show uniqueness of who you are and that's what colleges want to know and that's what you want to know when you go through making your application you want to figure out who you are too that's part of being a young person so um i just wanted to share this because if you submit an essay to me to be edited then i'm going to tell you these same things um and hopefully i can save you some money if you were planning on submitting an essay and now you're thinking about your essay and you're like, it fits one of these criteria. So thank you for watching this video and thank you for supporting my channel continually. I will be back soon with content that isn't about essays. So I don't know why you would watch this video to the end if you don't care about essay content. But anyway, if you want, you can subscribe. If you don't want to, then you're fine because I don't post that often anyway. I'm just kidding. Well, what am I saying? If you want, you can subscribe. If you don't, I don't. It's fine. It's okay. Um, YouTube's not never going to be my job.